I've solved so many of the command of quantitative evidence questions or those graph questions and learned how to solve the two types of graphical questions easily using the ARC method and I'll solve three questions for each type. Hi, I'm Mohammed, and I help students boost their SAT reading and writing score through our programs. The first type asks, which choice best describes data from the graph that support the student's conclusion? This means it's a supporting question. Following the ARC method, we need to always start with A, analyze the graph. If you read the text before the graph, you'll go to the text, check the graph, go to the text again, check the graph again, and you'll find out that you have just wasted 5 minutes, and you'll have to rush the next few questions. You'll lose focus and time because there are certain things that the text talks about that make a whole lot more sense when presented using visuals, such as graphs and charts beforehand. So always, just always, analyze the graph first. On top of the graph, it says that it is about the monthly hours of sunshine from April to September in Anchorage and Fairbanks, Alaska. So these are the two places in Alaska. And we see on the left, it shows the number of hours of sunshine. And at the bottom, it shows each month. The triangle patterns represent Anchorage and the square patterns represent Fairbanks. Now let's skim the text and then follow the second step in ARC, R. Read the conclusion. We don't need to read the entire text because it just restates the stuff in the graph but textually. So just read the conclusion. The student concludes that the two cities show a similar pattern in the monthly hours of sunshine from April to September. So we need to find something that's similar between the two cities from April to September. In this graph, we can see from April to June, the number of hours of sunshine was increasing. So from here to here. And however, from June to September, it decreases. So let's see the multiple choices and follow the letter C in ARC. Compare your prediction to the choices. Choice A. The monthly hours of sunshine in both Anchorage and Fairbanks hold steady in June and July before beginning to decline in August. Note, as we can see here, that the monthly hours of sunshine decreases from June to July, and this does not match our answer prediction. Choice B. The monthly hours of sunshine in both Anchorage and Fairbanks increases from April to June and then decreases from June to September. Yeah, we can see that this matches our prediction and this matches the data in the graph. So it increases from April to June and then from June to September it decreases. Choice C. Anchorage and Fairbanks both have less than 200 monthly hours of sunshine from April to September. As we can see, that's not true. In April to July, we can see that the monthly hours of sunshine was more than 200 for both. Plus, this does not match our prediction. Choice D. Anchorage and Fairbanks both have more than 300 monthly hours of sunshine from April to June and less than 200 hours from July to September. This does not match our answer prediction. Plus, Anchorage has less than 300 hours of sunshine from April to June and both cities have more than 200 monthly hours of sunshine in July. So choice B is correct. One of the biggest mistakes students make is checking all the multiple choices and comparing them to the graphs. What you should do if you have a prediction is just skim the choices and find the one that kind of says the same thing as your prediction. Let me show you how you can save lots of time with this next question. All right, so let's look at this chart or bar graph question next. Let me just cut the extra part out and zoom in on the conclusion because it is kind of small right now. Let's start with A, analyze. I see a bar graph labeled characteristics of the banks of the Paruvo River downstream of the Jordanelle Dam. We've got three years, 1987, 1993, and 2006. Each year has bars for grass cover, bare soil, and forest cover. On the left, it shows the amount of area the grass cover, bare soil, and forest cover are taking. Now I'll skim the text to R, read the scientist's conclusion. Scientists conclude that the dam changed the river in ways that benefited grass plants but didn't benefit trees. This means that we need to look for evidence in the graph that the area of the grass increased while the area of trees decreased. So I'm gonna scan for trends. Grass cover clearly increases across the years as we can see from here. So it is low in 1987 and it gets much higher by 2006. And then we have forest cover. Forest cover, on the other hand, seems to go down over time. So from 1987, it's higher, and then it decreases by 2006. Bare soil is kind of in the middle, but does not change much. So visually, it looks like the amount of grass is increasing over the years, and the amount of trees are decreasing. So let's follow C. 
compare our prediction to the choices. Pause the video and skim the choices to find the choice that matches our answer prediction. Alright, so let's check the correct answer. Choice D. Choice D says grass cover increased from 1987 to 1993 and from 1993 to 2006, whereas forest cover decreased in those periods. This says grass increased while forest decreased. And yes, that matches both the data and the conclusion or our prediction. So I'm choosing choice D. As you just saw, we can save a lot of time just skimming and finding the choice that matches our prediction. The next question is as hard as these questions get. You can't just check if the choice is saying some incorrect data or not. It will sometimes say the correct data, but it will go against what the question is asking you. So let me show you what I mean. But before I move on to the next question, you can join our free community using the link in the description where we host lots of classes and have lots of resources to help students. Or you can click the link below to see what we offer in our paid program. Alright, moving on to question 3. So we've got a data table for this one. Let's A. Analyze. Let me just zoom in because this is all extra and we only need the conclusion. Nucleobase concentrations from Murchison, I hope I said that right, meteorite and soil samples in parts per billions. These are the nucleobases, so isoguanine, purine, and so on. Here it says Murchison meteorite sample 1, Murchison meteorite sample 2, and Murchison soil sample. And the numbers below them must represent the concentrations of the nucleobases in these samples, such as the amount of isoguanine and meteorite sample 1 and meteorite sample 2. Now the question says, which choice best describes data from the table that support the team's conclusion? Let's move on to R. Read the conclusion. What's the team's conclusion? It is that there is evidence that the nucleobases in the Murchison meteor meteorite formed in space and are not the result of contamination on Earth. Okay, so this is telling us that we need to show proof that the nucleobases are from the meteorite and not the soil sample. So, which molecules are found in the meteorite but not in the soil? If we check the table, we can see that isoguanine and purine are both present in meteorite sample 1 and meteorite sample 2, but not in the soil samples. Just a quick tip here. Remember, not all things from the data should directly support the claim or conclusion presented. Just a selected part is enough. We can see that other compounds like adenine and xanine are present in the Murchison meteorite sample 1 and 2 and also present in the soil. So they are less useful for supporting a space origin. So the answer will probably be something like isoguanine and purine were found in the meteorite samples but not in the soil sample. Alright, now we can compare the prediction to the choices. Pause the video and try to find the answer on your own. Before I say the right answer, however, I want to mention a common mistake students make on these graphical questions. They think that if the choices are supported by the data, then it is obviously the correct choice. However, on these harder questions, and these are as hard as these questions get, you not only have to check if the choices are supported by the data, but also supported by the conclusion or claim. For example, choice B in this question says, Adenine and xanine were detected in both of the meteorite samples and in the soil sample. Yes, we can see adenine and xanine are, are detected in both meteorite sample 1 and meteorite sample 2 and also in the soil samples. However, this weakens the conclusion and the question is asking for the choice that supports the conclusion, not weakens it. If it asks for the choice that would weaken the conclusion, you would choose the choice opposite to what the conclusion says. So this is obviously the wrong choice. Let's look at choice A. Isoguanine and purine were detected in both meteorite samples but not in the soil sample. And yes, that is supported by the table and that exactly matches our prediction. So choice A is our best match. So here are the main takeaways. Take a screenshot if you want to remember these rules. And to solve more questions like these with us, join our free classes. Now let's see the second type of command of quantitative evidence question. Here is an example. This type asks, which choice most effectively uses data from the graph to illustrate the claim? We can identify this type of graph question from the blank at the end or the uncompleted text. We will follow ARC again. However, it is a little different for this one because we don't have a conclusion for this one. And we don't need to make any predictions for this one. 
Oh, and by the way, if you have any question, leave them down below and I'll answer them. I'll zoom in and as usual, you'll A, analyze the graph first. And you can see that on the top, it says that it is about economic policy uncertainty in the United Kingdom from 2005 to 2010. It shows the amount of uncertainty on the left and the year on the bottom. The white color represents trade policy. The gray color represents the tax and public spending policy and the black color represents general economic policy. Okay, now we will move on to the second letter in ARC, R. Read around the last two lines. Most of the time, reading around two of the last lines is enough to understand what is going to be in the multiple choices. One revelation of her work is that a general measure may not fully reflect uncertainty about specific areas of policy, as in the case of the United Kingdom, where general economic policy uncertainty blank. To be honest, some questions are really, really tricky, and they have lots of keywords thrown around, and they make it impossible to make a prediction. So for this question alone, we won't be forming any predictions. So let me show you how you can solve it if you're hit with this scenario where you don't have any prediction. And we will do so by moving on to C and ARC. Compare the choices to the graph. Let's look at the multiple choices. Choice A says, general economic policy uncertainty aligned closely with uncertainty about tax and public spending policy in 2005, but differed from uncertainty about tax and public spending policy by a large amount in 2009. But in 2009, they were both pretty similar. So this is probably wrong. Choice B, general economic policy uncertainty was substantially lower than uncertainty about tax and public spending policy each year from 2005 to 2010. No, we can see that in 2006, 2007, and 2009, that general economic policy uncertainty was greater than tax and public spending policy. Choice C, General economic policy uncertainty reached its highest levels between 2005 and 2010 in the same year that uncertainty about trade policy and tax and public spending policy reached their lowest levels. General economic policy didn't reach the highest levels from 2005 and 2010. We can see that other policies were greater than them in some years, plus trade policy and tax and public spending policy were not always at their lowest. Choice D. General economic policy uncertainty was substantially lower than uncertainty about trade policy in 2005 and substantially higher than uncertainty about trade policy in 2010. Now, the data supports this, so it is correct. Now, the next question is also a hard question because many multiple choices are supported by the data in the graph. Question 2. Step 1 in ARC. Analyze the graph. We're looking at the bar graph showing the number of lizard species by average percent of maximal speed used when pursuing prey or escaping predators. The x-axis shows the speed ranges such as 30 to 39%, 40 to 49%, all the way up to 90 to 100%. And the y-axis shows the number of lizard species. There are two bars and they're showing the amount of lizard species trying to escape or pursue at different speed ranges. One is for escaping and one is for pursuing. So basically this shows the number of lizards that are either pursuing and attempting to catch prey or escaping from predators. And what the lizard speeds are when they're escaping or pursuing. Again, step two, R and arc. Read the last two lines. In this case, the text is so short that we have to read the whole thing. It may seem that the optimal strategy for an animal pursuing prey or escaping predators is to move at maximal speed, but the energy expense of exploiting full speed capacity can disfavor such a strategy and even in escape context, as evidenced by the fact that blank. So we're completing the sentence with the choice that proves lizards often don't go full speed when escaping. Now let's move on to C and ARC. Compare the choices to the graph. So unlike the previous question, we actually have a prediction for this one. So we can just skim the choices and look for the one that has the same idea or premise as our prediction. Pause the video and try to select the correct answer. Before I tell you the correct answer, however, let's look at choice C and choice D. Choice C says, more lizard species use, on average, 90 to 100% of their maximal speed while escaping predation than use any other percentage of their maximal speed. This mentions that 90 to 100% speed is the most common. Again, be careful, the data supports this. 
but it wouldn't fit the text because the text says the amount of energy used up because of using full speed can be as bad as shown by. And then choice C says as shown by the fact that most lizards use 90 to 100% of their maximal speed. Well, that doesn't make sense. If it was bad to go at full speed, why would most of them go at full speed? It just doesn't make sense. So this is wrong. Choice D. At least four lizard species use on average less than 100% of their maximal speed while pursuing prey. Again, this is supported by the data. However, the line before the blank is talking about lizard species escaping, not pursuing. The reason I showed you these two choices is so that you can see that both of these choices say stuff that matches the graph but do not fit within the blank. If you pause the video and try to figure out the correct answer and you guess that choice B is correct, you'd be right. Here's why. Choice B says multiple lizard species move at an average of less than 90% of their maximal speed while escaping predation. Yeah, we can see that there are a lot of species that are not using full speed when escaping. Plus this logically completes the text. So the answer is B. This is the last and final question. Try to solve this on your own and then we'll go over it. Question 3. Again, I'll zoom in just for the last two lines to be visible. A. Analyze. We're looking at land area covered by native flowering plants at a site in Antarctica. In the species section, we can see that we have two plants, and we can also see the amount of area covered in 2009 and 2018. And right next to that, there is the percentage increase in area for each plant from 2009 to 2018. We can see that the first plant covers a large area compared to the second plant. Now let's move on to R in ARC. Read the last two lines. If we start reading from here, it would not give us enough context. So let's go to the line or sentence before that. All right, here. Cannon found that the area of land covered by the two species had significantly expanded during the nine year period. While both species likely benefited from warming temperatures, Colobenthesis quitnesis, I don't know how to pronounce that. So I'll just call them plant one and plant two. In this case, this is plant two. All right, let's move on to the third step in ARC, C. Compare the choices to the table. Again, we don't have a prediction for this one, but we can guess that it will say something like how one of the plants benefited more or benefited differently or didn't benefit as much. So you need to mainly focus on comparing the choices to the data. Pause the video and try to select the correct answer. Now, here's the correct answer. Choice B. Plant 2 saw a greater expansion than Plant 1 did increasing the area of land it covered by more than half. Some students would think that this is wrong because plant 2 increased by like 4 square meters while plant 1 increased by more than 300 square meters. But we should focus on the percent increase. Plant 2 increased by 55% while plant 1 increased 28%. So it is true, plant 2 saw a greater expansion than plant 1 and also it is true that the area of plant 2's land increased by more than half, so more than 50%. So obviously choice b is correct so this is how you solve these graphics questions with an uncompleted text and again if you want more practice with these questions you can click the link in the description to join our free community and free classes where we solve lots of questions if you're watching this video you're likely struggling with those supporting and weakening questions as well click here to see the easy and simple strategy i use to solve these questions correctly 100 percent of the time